My name is April Frederick and I'm an environmental educator here at the Burker Creek Preserve Environmental Education Center. In the late 60s and early 70s, the residents of Pinellas County recognized the importance of protecting the sort of unique natural heritage found here in Pinellas County. And the county government itself reacted to that recognition among the residents and formed a coalition of people from all walks of life within the county, volunteers from various government agencies, planners, architects, citizens, a lot of people got together and began to look at the open spaces that remained in the county during that period of time and identify and prioritize large spaces for conservation and, and possible acquisition in the future. In 1992, Burker Creek Preserve was officially formed and it's actually sort of a nice composite of existing partnering agencies, existing land ownership, all folded within the boundaries of this 8,700 acre preserve in order to take care of this land, do those restoration works, protect that portion of the watershed. My favorite part of Brooker Creek is that I could just look around and I see all these green bushes and plants and it's just so amazing. There's a lot of places, you know, they've got this park and that park, um, but it's all manicured, um, you know, that nice, neat, straight lines and the underbrush cut out and playgrounds put in and things like that. This is just as nature intended it to be. It's very environmental and it is um, very cool, interesting and has a bunch of plants and animals. Probably the primary purpose of the preserve is to protect a significant portion of the Brooker Creek watershed. The Brooker Creek watershed lies in a very urban area and so any places that we can protect large tracts of land inside of that watershed are going to contribute to the clarity, the timing, the quantity, and in other words, keeping the quality of the water in Brooker Creek. We're here in this, this little isolated green space, and so figuring out a way to restore something that resembles natural hydrology, figuring out a way to manage ecosystems um, in, in a way that would mimic their, their natural processes with tools like fire. Um, those are, can be really difficult problems in an urban and suburban setting where you have a number of things that interrupt hydrology like roadways and drainage ditches and subdivisions and power line corridors and railroads and well fields and all of these things that change the way water moves around. You know, the, the county spends money buying these properties, which is great, but there seems to be no thought on upkeep of the properties um, and they should do things like parks that have boat ramps put the fees up for launching um, one of the ideas that would suit me ideally would be to build blinds for bird watchers photographers um, in all the parks put a padlock on it um, with one key that would fit anyone in any park and then charge these people that want to use them X amount per year and this is income towards keeping what we've got. We do periodically get some donations for um, new exhibits. Right now the funding to operate the preserve and manage restoration projects and operate this facility is all comes out of the county's operating budget. Initially again there were uh, the property purchases mostly or the property Amass, was amassed mostly from existing ownerships and those partnering agencies. The construction of this facility um, came partly from Penny for Pinellas taxes. Well, actually, I heard that they um, most recently they were going to close down the little um, auditorium they have there. So we're hoping they keep that open. And I don't know if it's because of donations or what, but we like coming here. So we're hoping they stay open. You need to have education in order for conservation to work. We can set aside as much land as we want to. We can lock it all up as much as we want to. We can do our little conservation bits on each of those little isolated pieces of property, but we still have that human component, the human interaction, 
that takes place. Well, around here, um, especially since they're doing so much building, it's nice to come to a place where there's still, um, you know, open areas. You see a lot of different foliage and um, a lot of the different animals that live around here. So it's nice to be able to come and see that. We don't have the ability anymore, particularly in the eastern United States, to set aside entire intact landscapes. So everything that we're conserving is fragmented. It's an isolated pocket. So we can't have any conservation effort, efforts be really successful in those fragmented ecosystems without the education that needs to take place to help people understand why that conservation is important and how they can help ensure that those properties uh, remain. If we don't have places like this, the natural wildlife we stand to lose. And we, we've had enough species gone extinct already. But if we carry on building and destroying natural habitats the way we are doing, we will have a lot more species become extinct. There are endangered species here. We have some listed species pretty much across the spectrum of life within the preserve. We have several endangered plant species, um, specifically a couple of the air plant species. The Tillandsia species are endangered. We have a number of threatened and endangered reptiles, amphibians, um, fish species, insect species, butterflies, that sort of thing. So there's a lot. Brooker Creek is a place where Native American endangered species can thrive without being killed. Do you educate adults or do you educate children? That's really a difficult question. And personally, I think that we should be doing both. We could consider the, pos the, the fact that we've been doing environmental education for schools for probably more than 20 years now. And we're, we're in really kind of a crisis situation with regard to the conservation of our natural resources. So it's really important to continue that education because the kids are the future of the world. But the kids aren't people who are making decisions about natural resources uses today. And so I think that we need to readjust our focus just a little bit and bring those adults back into the fold of environmental education so that we can begin to help them learn how their choices have impacts on the natural environment. So I think they both carry equal weights. Uh, we like being outside. We think that um, it's important to teach our daughter um, to be kind and, you know, to um, just try to learn and understand the different parts of the of nature. The Burger Creek Preserve is a really amazing place. And, and I hope that people will come to realize how important it is and what a jewel they have and what a rarity it is to see this large space again set aside in this densely populated urban and suburban environment. I think it says a lot about the residents of Pinellas County that they voted to tax themselves, that they spent so much time and effort prioritizing and identifying pieces of property to set aside for conservation. And I think we should be proud of ourselves as residents of Pinellas County for having done that and continue to recognize the importance of maintaining these places as green spaces and the, and the importance of those green spaces to our lives in general, not just their aesthetic value, not just what they do for us when we come to visit these places, but what they do for us from an ecological perspective, even when we're not here visiting them. Well, nature, it, it's a great part of my life. I like it. It's cool. Think about yourself being a tree. When you're cut down, it hurts your feelings and you're dead. So that's what we'd feel like if we were a plant or an animal. So would you like to be feeling like that? Because I wouldn't. 